In lesson three, we're going to be continuing with form design. We'll be focusing on more form formatting. I'll show you how to size objects to the grid. We'll talk about grid lines versus grid dots. I get this email all the time from people. Some people see the grid lines, some people see the grid dots, and I'll show you how to switch between them. And then we'll do a lot more with working with colors and with themes. Okay, our database is coming along nicely now. Let's go back to design view here. We got some more fields to add. So let's go up to the add existing fields again. The last thing we added was country. Let's add website. This time I'm going to add it by simply double clicking on it. Watch this, double click. It drops it on your form. It kind of just puts it wherever it wants to. So you really don't get any control over where it goes. But that's how you do that. All right, slide this over like this. Okay. Let's bring over email and phone number. Click and drag, drop them right about there. Okay, looks good. Let's slide this up. Email can be bigger, that can be pretty long. Let's drag that over like that. Now, one thing you might notice, if you look at the labels here, you can see how that line is not quite exactly on that dotted grid in the background. Now, if I zoom in there, you can see it even more clearly. See that? That's one of my pet peeves when it comes to working with objects and axes. Whenever you drag a new object on there, it doesn't always fit on that grid. Now, if I click on this and then resize it, it will drop right on the grid there. See that exactly? Same thing here, like that. And you can select all of these objects and then right click and then go to size and then to grid. And that will snap all of those objects on the grid. Exactly. See that? And sometimes people like this look. They like to be able to take these objects and make them right up next to each other like that. See? Oop, undo that. See, and if you, if you put them all right next to each other, you get this nice, nice little tight block. All right? I, I don't personally do that myself, but I see a lot of people try to design, especially the reports like that. All right, we'll spend some more time with the grid in a bit. Now, if you don't see grid dots and you see these grid lines, this means that your system is probably set to metric instead of English. So you've got two options. You can either change your system over to English measurement, which I'm sure a lot of you in the metric world don't want to do, or go to your forms properties, go to the all tab. I like to click this button so it goes alphabetical. Come down and find the grid settings, grid X and grid Y. Normally, this is set to 24 dots per inch. All right, but since you're metric, you're getting 24 dots per centimeter, which is a lot smaller. So change this to something like, I don't know, 10. All right, well, maybe go smaller than that. Let's go to maybe seven or eight. Let's see, how is eight? There we go. And now you'll see the grid dots. The problem is they're too fine, so they don't show up there if you're on metric, All right? Because each one of these is a centimeter now instead of an inch. All right, so the default for us in the English world is 24 dots per inch. And I'm gonna go switch my system back now to English. And that, by the way, is in your regional settings in your control panel. Just search for measurement systems and you'll find it. So I'm going to switch this back to US and hit apply and then restart my database. And there we go. I'm back to normal. Normal for us here in the US. I know a lot of you are watching this from around the world. Yes, I wish we were on the metric system too, like the rest of y'all. But uh, uh, you know, progress is slow here. I actually have a whole separate video about the grid dots versus line that I put together a few years ago because I get asked this question all the time. So I'll put that in the link section too if you want to go watch that. Okay, so what other fields do we still have here? Let's close this, go back to add existing fields. We got the phone number in there. We got number of employees, discount rate, customer sense, credit limit is active. Let's bring these guys in. Click and drag, drop them right there. Okay, let's slide them up now, highlight them all. Click and drag, get them right there. Nope, oh, nope, see, I always miss them. As long as you don't unselect that block, they'll stay selected right there. I got a brand new mouse, and I'm still not used to it yet. <laughs> and let's take is active. Now, when we bring is active over, that comes over as a checkbox, a yes or no checkbox. Some people call it a tick box. No, in Access, it's called a checkbox. All right, so we're going to take this checkbox, and we're going to slide it up here. Right there is active put it right on top there we go all right now notes notes comes in as a really big block like that that's because that's a long text field right formerly called a memo field nice and big so i like to put the notes field right up about here all right so i'm going to take this label and delete it see how it comes on over here right there see it okay click on it it's on top hit delete we're going to slide the notes field right 
there. All right, now these other fields over here, we could take these and put them underneath it. So do that, like that. Discount rate over here. Come on. Customer cents and credit limit. Get them all nice and snuggled up there. Okay. Phone number, let's make that bigger. There we go. All right, let's bring these guys down. Let's line them up on the bottom here. We're right about there. Okay. And that means the notes field can get bigger. Let's bring that down to about there and slide it over this way. All right, looking good, looking good. Now I got all this empty space. Let's resize the form. Come over here to the right, grab the right edge of the form there and drag it in. Get rid of all that extra empty space. Same thing down on the bottom. Grab the scroll bar, come down here. We're going to slide this guy up just like that. Get rid of all that empty space. All right, looks good. Save it. Let's close it and reopen it. And beautiful. Looking pretty good so far. Now, I personally don't like the way some, some fields line up on the right, some fields line up on the left. I hate that. Even in Excel, I like everything lining up on one side. I know accountants like their digits and stuff to be on the right, so all the, the pennies line up. I, I just personally don't like that. So I am going to select these four cells, go to Format, and here we are right here, align left, right, center, and there's right. I'm going to go left. All right, same thing with these. Make sure all these guys over here are aligned to the left. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again. There we go. Looks better. Got to do some more label fixing, right? Let's come in here. Let's make is active just say active. All right, we got phone, num employee. Let's make this employees. All right, discount space rate, customer space sense, credit limit. Right? Or you can make this like, you know, number of employees or whatever, whatever you want to do. Labels are just for you. Okay. And again, see, it always bothers me that the labels aren't on the grid. So I like to select everything, right click, size to grid, make everybody snap on those grid dots. We got to change the color. Now, instead of manually changing all these, you can click on them if you want to hold down the shift key, click on multiple ones like that. That's fine. Or you can select them in a block like that. And you can go back to format and change the format color right here, the font color. Okay. You can also use the format painter, which is, where'd he go? He's right there. He's grayed out because I don't have anything selected. But let's say I select this country, right? And hit the format painter and then paste over that guy. See, copies and pastes the format. And if you want the format painter to stick on, just double click it. Double click. You can go click, click, click. See that? And when you're done, just turn them off. And I use them so much, I put them right up here on my quick launch toolbar. Now, I've got a whole lesson on customizing the ribbon and the quick launch toolbar coming up later on. But if you drop this little box down there right there, you can go to more commands. You can see all the different ones that are on here, like undo and redo. If you want undo on there, put undo on there. I always use the keyboard for undo. Okay. If you want to pick a different one, take undo off. All right. You can go to more commands. Here's all the different commands. Right. You want cut and copy on there. Just pick them. Hit add. And it brings them right over here. Okay. Again, I use the keyboard for stuff like that. So I'll hit OK. All right. We're going to learn all about the quick launch toolbar in an upcoming lesson. For those of you that can't wait, I cover it in Access Expert Level 5. So we will be getting to it. I'll put a link down in the link section if you want to go watch it right now. Now, one thing that I like to do with notes boxes, I like to make them look like that little yellow sticky paper, right, that you stick all over people's desks and monitors and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the properties for this guy. And let's find the special effect property. And let's make that raised. There's raised, sunken, etched, shadowed. All right, let's go with raised and see what raised looks like. Okay, I like that. Actually, let's go with shadowed. Let's go with shadowed. Yeah, shadowed looks better. Okay, now let's change the foreground color. Um, actually, let's make that standard black and let's make the background color a light yellow. Now, you can use it off here off the themes if you want to, but I'm going to go down here and pick the actual yellow. Then come in here and go to more colors. Okay, here's the standard colors. All right, come over here to the custom and just slide that up, make it a little bit whiter. Like that. Hit OK. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, now that shadow color, as you see there, is gray. Let's change the border color. So click on that box again. Here's the shape outline. 
All right, let's go and make that a darker, like a black. There we go. That looks like a piece of sticky paper now. If you don't want it that black, maybe go like there. Let's see. That looks good. I like that. Now let's save that, come back out here, open it up again, and it looks like a piece of sticky paper. See? All kinds of cool stuff you can do. I've got many, many lessons on form design and, and aesthetics and tricks like that. Um, I'll put a link to my aesthetics video. It's one of my tech help videos. Go watch that if you want to learn how to make really cool looking, you know, customized form designs, which we are going to spend a lot of time on form design. And of course, you can use all the standard techniques in here that you might be familiar with from Word or Excel. You can change the font, right? You can change the font color, all right? Here's the fonts up here, Calibri. You can see all the different fonts are available, the font sizes. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over this stuff. I assume you know, you know the basics of using Microsoft Word, for example. Now, Access does have themes available as well. They're right here. And these themes allow you to have like sets of fonts and colors and all those things. And ours haven't changed because uh, I used standard colors instead, which is what I always use. But let's, let me show you, let me, let, me, let me demonstrate what themes do real quick. I don't spend a lot of time on them because personally I don't use them. But let's say uh, this background color here, let's say I used a theme color. All right, we'll pick just one of these theme colors like that. And for the notes, I'll pick, um, let's go with uh, that yellow. Okay, now if I go to form design and watch as I change the theme, uh, you can see all the colors and fonts change in the database form. See that? All right, I, I personally don't use these. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. All right, in fact, I'm going to go back and go undo, undo, and put those back the way they were. I like mine better. <laughs> but that's themes. Everyone always asks about them. If you like them, great. Use them. If not, I, I never use them, to be honest. I stick with standard colors. That way, if the user does change the theme, my forms still stay the way they're supposed to look. But you can change all kinds of things. You can change the background color, the foreground color. If you go to the format tab here, you can change the shape outlines thickness. Here's line thickness down here. If you want a thick border like that, see? Okay, you can change the border color. Like that okay all kinds of stuff and we'll be doing a lot more with this in future lessons want more if you'd like to see me post the next lesson in the series for free here on my youtube channel be sure to like the video subscribe to my channel and post a comment saying i'd like the next lesson please click on the link in the description below for more details on how this works